Lavlania in France, the sliding venue for the 1992 Winter Olympic Games in Albeville, in a narrow valley down from the 2,000 meter altitude at the top of La Plane, in the shadow of Mont Blanc. They built a tight, twisty and demanding bobsleigh, skeleton and luge track. And it still retains the same challenges that it had all those years ago when it was first opened in 1990. Welcome back everybody for the second deciding heat, race one of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. And a fascinating race in prospect. Three sleds covered by 600s top the leaderboard. Rookies Keisha Love and Azaria Hill making their first World Cup start together and each of them having their first World Cup, dry, uh, World Cup outing in women's bobsleigh. They lie in third place, just 600s off the lead. Kim Kalicki with Leoni Fiebig in second place, a hundredth in front of them. Fiebig claimed her first World Cup medal as an athlete here in the 2020 race, has never been out of the podium since then. And just ahead of them, Lauren Alter and Nailus Coyton. Lauren Alter, our Olympic champion, she was the winner here in the last World Cup race in 2020, and she looks determined to do exactly the same once more. But it is not just about them. There are some fantastically tight battles. Lisa Bookwitz and Alana Myers-Taylor tied for fourth and really in with a shot at the medals. Not too far behind Melanie Hassler. She could catch one of them if they make a mistake. Then Margot Bock is in seventh, looking to equal her career best top six finish. And she's got a challenge from Bree Walker, Andrea Greco, and Ying Ching of China. Then Wai Ming Ming and Bianca Ribby, Cynthia Appiah and Linda Vishnevsky, just a hundredth apart. And then Giada Andriuti, who will be the first off. So 15 sleds go in reverse order of their first heat performance. As ever, both runs count. There's Lisa Bookwitz. There's one of the vital bits of equipment, case you love putting on the spikes. If you wonder what stops you falling over on the ice, that's what it is. Brianna Walker tuning in, tuning out. There's Andrea Greco. She was on the podium in the bronze medal position. Yesterday's women's monobob race, Keisha won, Keisha won. Andrea Greco was second. And that woman you just saw there was in third place, Melanie Hassler of Switzerland. All three of them taking their first ever World Cup medal in monobob. And it was Keisha Love's first ever race. Astonishing stuff. So, 15 down to one. Gianna Andriuti goes off first, then Lydia Vishnevsky, Cynthia Appiah, Bianca Ribby, and Wai Ming Ming of China. She'll be chasing her teammate Ying Ching, Andrea Greco, uh, Brie Walker, and Margot Bock, all battling just ahead of them outside the top six, then Mel Hassler. And uh, she was being cheered on yesterday evening by her team, um, yesterday morning rather, by her teammate Nadia Pasternak. Nadia got a bit busy last night. We'll talk about that in a minute. Second deciding heat, race one of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. We're in La Plagne in France, getting us underway. Garda Andreuti and Tanya Vicencino. First time driving here for Garda. Last time we raced here, it was her brake woman, Tanya Vicencino, who was driving the Italian sled. They're in 15th place after the first heat off a 6.95 start. Second getaway, just a fraction slower, 7.0. It's a very long, very flat start area. All of the athletes regard it as a marathon, not a sprint. It's really important to get speed there because there are so many turns. 1,500 meters, 19 corners. As you can see, very busy. Sled is barely ever straight, whipping around from one turn to the next. 104.3, we'll see 105, nearly 106 kilometers an hour there from the top sleds. And about 125 at the bottom. A couple of little taps there. 16 to 17, 18 to 19 as well, going uphill into the final corner, 19. And uphill again to the finish line, 62.41, 62.69 in their first heat. So that's a very sizable improvement, 2800s quicker. That's exactly what the drivers, the athletes will want to do. Try and find a, a bit more at the start if they can. And the drivers will definitely want to tidy up their run down the track. 
So Gian Anciuti racing here in World Cup for the first time. This is corner 16, double pressure. It's really two corners joined together. I don't quite understand why it didn't get two, two corner numbers. 16 on, on the way in, 17 on the way out, but there you go, it didn't. Little skid, 18 to 19, it's gonna rob speed from the sled. There's the trucks, ready to take the sleds back up. At the top of the hill, Lindy Vishnevsky and Marika Zandeka. They raced together in the World Championships in Samaritz in February. This is their first ever start in the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh World Cup. Linda raced yesterday in the Monobob race. And we had, for the first time in a while, Polish men's sled yesterday in the two-man as well. 678, first heat getaway. Nice tidy load. Brent Wood Marika getting down out of sight. 675, so they find a fraction more. And although Linda did race yesterday, and they have raced in the World Cup, uh, in the World Championships rather, so TV lights, all that stuff, just always a little bit of nerves around the start of a World Cup season. I'm sure for their very first start. And just feeling a little bit tight, hopefully a bit more relaxed now. And that should reflect in Linda's drive. She was only 100th behind Cynthia Appiah, so that absolutely will be her target. The Canadian driver, more experienced, little tap there, 9 to 10. Really hard transition to get right. It's not a bad looking run though, quicker than Garda Andrew G at the bottom by a full kilometre an hour, just a little wayward meander at the bottom across the line 61.97 compared to 62.29 so again about a third of a second quicker that's good stuff great to see polish bobsleigh resurgent again and returning to the world cup the top tier of sliding and they don't yet have a four-man team Good to see them back in the men and the women's competition as well as the monobob. Little rattle there. She brought it hard down out of nine, trying to line up for corner 10. And so many do that. And again in 16, trying not to let it rise too high. Watch the runner tips. Now she's starting to steer. There we go. Just as she goes out of shot, just bringing it down. So they go into the leader's box. Scabbards first, leader box next, and away goes Cynthia Appiah with Leah Walker and wasting no time at all as the light changes. They've only got a hundredth in hand. Running it long, 6.54, 300 slower than their first heat. But it still gives them the 22 hundredths of a second advantage as they sit down. Cynthia had a bit of a, a wayward first heat. Shouldn't really be down this far in the order, and she knows it. Much better looking run so far. Ooh, little late there. Again, hasn't raced on this track. So learning fast with every run. It's not like car racing, you don't just get endless repetition going round and round the track. It's extremely limited. Six runs in training, and that will be for Monobob and the two-seat sled. Little tap and a skid that follows it. Out of 18, quite clean, down to 19. Should be significantly in front. No, only 800s. 61.90. So you see, as the, as the uh, Polish girls move out of the leader's box, they're still puffing and blowing after their exertions two minutes earlier at the top of the track. 1,800 metres above sea level. Walking around leaves you a bit breathless. A little high on the exit there, just took a tap and got nudged away from the ideal line. Again, late height means a bouncy transition from that upper labyrinth. So, see the happier there. And hiding in the helmet, Leah Walkenden. and they'll move into the leader's box ahead of their teammates on the track, Bianca Ribi and Neve Hockey. Lyndon Rush, the coach there on the left-hand side, watching the action. Twenty-one hundredths of a second in hand. 
They started about a tenth slower than their teammates. Let's see if they can get under 660 this time. 661. It was a tidier drive from Ribby than from Appia in the first run. She needs to do that again. Very, very easy to give away time with so many corners on this track and so many short transitions as well. The sleds now are so much quicker than they would have been back in the late 80s when the track was designed. Then they were pretty much almost open sleds and the speeds are much higher. And that means like modern cars racing on tracks that were designed for cars of the 50s and the 60s, they get to places a lot faster and the, the corners are tighter and the transitions are tighter. And it's very much the case in sliding as well. And what it does mean is that you have to work hard for your living here, really work hard, not just athletically, but in the head. 61.88, it's a good looking run, 2300s up. So they came down 62.07. So again, finding a couple of tents, improving with every drive, that's what it's all about. So Bianca Ribby, leave hockey. Bianca still new in her driving career. She made her debut in the World Cup last season. First ever World Cup race, though, was as a brake woman for Kaylee Humphreys. <laughs> yeah, Alpha Alicia Risting, beg your pardon. But now driving with Neve, her regular starter behind her. Now we get into a tight battle just outside the top six. Tenth after the first heat, but only 900s away from seventh is Yingqing of China. Uh, beg your pardon, we've got and this is why she's up next. It's Wai Ming Ming. So Wai just 400s ahead of Bianca Ribby. So we've got this tight battle to deal with first. 60, 66, 6, 66. So 300s given away of her 400s of a, of a lead at the start. But again, dear, Wai had a fairly tidy early part of the track. And while the speeds are bigger and more dramatic lower down when the speed is low at the top mistakes cost you more and of course there's a lot more ice for which that lack of speed will play out on which that lack of speed will play out so why from a hundredth back 11 hundreds up and he slid with decent speed fastest of all at the bottom a couple of kilometres an hour quicker than anybody else has gone so far. And that's a mark of her neatness, 61.59. And that is a big improvement over her first heat, a very big improvement. That would have been seventh in the first heat, not 11th. That's more like it. So why definitely got high into the woodwork in corner six in the first run. Avoided that drama this time. A bit less of a Spanish Inquisition, I think, from her coach, Yanis Minins. So a much nicer looking, tidier looking run. Again, look at the way that she holds the sled pretty level all the way through 16, not allowing those big fluctuations. There's Y on the left, and uh, Tan, her great woman on the right, Tang Ying Chi making only her third World Cup race start. They lead after the first five sleds. So five sleds down, ten to go. And there on the right, Wai Ming Ming, Tang Yin Chi on the left-hand side of Great Woman. And Tan's history has been uh, a very occasional appearances. She's raced twice in World Cup with Ying Ching, made a debut in Calgary in 2019, raced again then in Samaritz in February 2022, and now December 23, her next race. Just wanted to shout out very quickly to uh, friends of the show and friends of Swiss and French bobsledding. 
Um, normally, the number one call for the Swiss bobsled driver, Melanie Hassler, is her longtime teammate, Nadia Pasternak. And Nadia was here at the track yesterday, cheering on Mel in the monobob race when she took the silver medal, and then rushed into hospital yesterday evening and gave birth to her baby named Noelle. So congratulations to Nadia Pasternak, to her partner, Roman Heinrich, who of course slid so successfully for France in men's bobsleigh, and bienvenue and welcome to Noelle. She was born just before 11 o'clock last night. So big, big day for Melanie Hassler yesterday and also for Nadia Pasternak. And just a thought as well for Colin Freeling, who we saw racing on Friday in the skeleton, there in, all the skeleton athletes are now in Innsbruck. Colin was rushed into hospital for an emergency operation yesterday evening. So, heard from his dad, Stefan, that he is okay. But uh, our very best thoughts to Colin Freeling, uh, whatever else. Don't think we're going to see him on the start line next weekend in Eagles. Five down, ten to go. Race one of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. We're in La Plagne in France. And our current leaders, Ying, uh, uh, Wai Ming Ming and Tang Ying Chi of China. Ying Ching and Wang Yu, her break woman, had a, a sizable advantage, 1,200 to the second over them from the first heat. But a much tidier drive from Wai is really putting that under scrutiny. 666, they start exactly the same, so their 1200s remains intact. Now, why made a mistake coming off four here? And so does Yin. So, honors even at the moment should be about 1200s up still. 1100s, there you go. So, pretty much identical runs right now. Maybe a little loose in those transitions earlier on. Down into 10. Gaps coming down a whisker was 900s at the last clock, 800s of a second. Y was faster here. She's about a kilometre down, Ying. And she's about a, a, a kilometre down again. She had a little tap there. She's still in the green. I think she might be behind at the line. It could be to the 100th. It is 300s of a second, 61.74 downtime. So Wai Ming Ming tidied up her first run and turned over her teammate, Yin Ching. And these are the races within a race, the battles of teammates. <laughs> Always with a smile, Yanis Minin going, oh yeah, corner seven exit or whatever it was. This exit out of four, they both made the same mistake. But it's a little further down the transitions, a couple of whip transitions between six and ten that cost her that time and then gradually just slipped back behind her teammate. So now then, that means that as we get to Ninth place, Andrea Greco and Theodora Vlad. We have a Chinese 1 2. Now, Greco was only 600s ahead of Ying. And that, that means only 1800s in hand over Wai Ming Ming, the current leader. She took the bronze medal yesterday, her first ever World Cup medal in Monobob. That's a great pair of runs. She's been a silver medalist in women's bobsleigh back in 2020 in Segunda in the European Championships. Let's see if she can pick up the order here a little bit. Great woman Teodora, who's been with Andrea for the last two or three seasons, has also started driving on in her own right. So as ever, Paul Niagu getting the brake women into the front seat while also keeping them in the back seat for the big events. That's exactly what Andrea did when she was learning to drive. It's a really nice looking run as well. Started two tenths up, 1200's the advantage. So she stopped losing time. Needs to be clean here, here we go. Starting to open it up again. Only third best speed. Might not be more than single digits at the line. Well, it's 1800, 6159. Well, that's yeah. exactly the same time set by Wai Ming Ming. Off a, a nearly identical start. 664 
for Greg Hoot and Vlad. 666 for Ming and Tan. So they are in the leader's box for Romania. We'll see Mihai Tentea racing for Romania in the four man this afternoon. He raced in the two man yesterday. Again, she takes the big first pressure and then holds that rise out of the depression into the second part of corner 16. Brianna Walker with Chiara Ridingius behind her. Welcome back to the World Cup for Chiara. Brie Walker disappointed to miss out on the podium finish that she had looked pretty well shaped up for in the first heat in the Monopod yesterday. Brie very pleased to be coming back to this track. She had a first ever official bobsleigh race here six years ago in Europe Cup. So this place definitely holds a special place in her heart. Nice looking run so far. 1700 to her advantage over Andrea Greco. This is good stuff from Bree. She was only 100th in front. If she can keep it tidy at the bottom of the track, she could really challenge the top half dozen. 3500s up, 3800s up. The speed is not the best. But she's got decent knowledge of this track. Still 3400s the advantage. This will put pressure on maybe even Melanie Hassler. 2800 speeds dropping away. Oh, and a long skid, 18 to 19. Should still be a quarter of a second in front. Nearly 61.38. Well, that is nearly half a second fast. There's Pierre Luders. He's got a good smile when he uses it, hasn't he? Such a good combination. Brie Walker and Pierre Luders. I think Pierre's really enjoying his time coaching the Aussie away from the demands of massive national federations. You know, rocking and rolling in the transition there. And here coming out of 18, just a little drift, not too much of a slide, but then she has to bring it back to 19. What's doing than you want to do? That's Max Robert. Bruno Mijon will be waiting at the top of the track as well, as we see France's Margot Bock and Carla Senechal. Margot made her World Cup debut here in February 2020, the last World Cup race here. And she was in seventh place after the first heat. Margot finished eighth in yesterday's Monobob race. On her debut here, she finished in sixth position. So the very least you will want to do is match that. It was a jam-packed field that day, and it is this day as well. Of course, the last time we raced here, nobody had raced here in World Cup for five years. It's only been three years since the last time, so quite a few of the drivers here have raced here before. Using the height there in six, not up in the woodwork like Y was at the first heat. 1,200s back from the start, 1,700s back at the moment. Second place behind Brianna Walker. Bringing it back, here we go. She's got to make her local knowledge pay here. She's the one that knows this track perhaps better than almost anyone. Second best speed, tucks her head down between 18 and 19. Every trick in the book for every 100 she can get. Did she even pop her head up in 19? 61.50, three tenths better than she managed in the first heat. But a massive improvement from Brianna Walker keeps her in the leader's box. So Margot Bock, Carla Seneschal, slip a spot. Is Carla okay? Doesn't look it. I don't know if she injured herself loading into the sled. I mean, she did not look great at the bottom. Look at this, ducks ahead. Now let's watch her through 19. Bogo show us 19 as well. I don't know if she even tucked her head back out again. Maybe it's just disappointment for Carla. 
Looks like she's okay. Fingers crossed. Brianna Walker leads, six to go. Melanie Hassler and Mara Morel for Switzerland. Mel was the silver medalist yesterday in the monobob. Great woman Nadia Pasternak having her first baby overnight in hospital, having been at the track yesterday morning cheering like a mental thing, I'm sure. Don't know if that induced labor or not, very probably so. Okay, let's have a look at the run from Mel. Nice exit out of four. Good clean stuff up top, nice out of five. Good height in six, not too loopy. 3,400's up. Starting to creep away from Bjarne Walker. Now there is an opportunity to try and move up as well. She's only 800s off the tie for fourth. 4,200's up. This is a good run from Melanie Hassler. I'm sure the Swiss team, particularly the girls, are absolutely cock a -hoop. Mickey Vogt claimed his first win in two-man yesterday. Across the line, 61-18. That is the fastest run of the competition so far by over a tenth of a second. That's a big one. That is a very big one. Zex and Fersich, 46, that's the start, 6.46. They started 6.50 in the first heat. 400 a second at the start, 1,200 of a second at the bottom. That's the rule of thumb in bobsleigh. You multiply any start advantage by three down the track. And on a busy driver's track like this, Melanie Hassler has just thrown down the gauntlet. Right, come and get it. Let's see who's got what. Five to go. Melanie has the leads from Brianna Walker and Margot Bock. That would be a heck of a podium. <laughs> Top five, we have a tie for fourth place. First off, Alana Myers Taylor, the winner here, not in 2020, but in 2015. And she was on the podium in 2012 as well with a bronze medal. Emily Renner behind her. Bronze on her debut in 2020 with Kaylee Humphreys. She's only in her fifth World Cup start, Emily Renner. 6.53. Great starting. Find 400 of a second at the start compared to their first getaway. Alana wants this so badly. She was right in the frame for the medals in the mono. It all slipped away. She wants to get on the podium again. This is her third visit to the track as a driver. She's not gone away without a medal in women's bobsleigh. Only 400s up. 900s. Just creeping ahead of Mel Hasler. 1300s of a second. She had eight in the hand from the first heat. She's nearly doubled that. Big loop since 16. Oh, hit on the exit. 1900s. The gap will come down a little. Long drift the wrong side into 19. I don't think it's enough to lose the lead. No, 2700s up. 60.99. Yeah, Brian Schimer can breathe again. Tuffy the two at the bottom there holds up the single digit. Alana Myers Taylor is four sleds away from or one sled, two sleds away from the medal. So tied for fourth. The gap to gold was only 18 hundredths of a second from the first heat. I'm not sure that's a race winning run, but we've had four first time winners so far this weekend in four different disciplines and all of them have featured the final few sleds making mistakes. Emily Renner on the right, Solana Myers-Taylor on the left. Okay, here we go. To break the tie, Lisa Buchwitz of Germany with Vanessa Mark behind her. Our second fastest starters. He starts the tenth quicker than Solana Myers-Taylor and Emily Renner. And ended up with exactly the same time at the bottom. 6.47, first heat, nice load. Quietly three corner one off a 6.45. They improved by a couple of hundreds and Alana improved by 400s. So their advantage is a little less, only 800s per second in front. Nice and quiet up at the top. 
really important to get quietly down through four and five and then down through this upper labyrinth. Whipping out at 12. Speed's rising all the time. Setting up for 16. Holds it nice and level all the way through. Now that's a lot of driving, cuts a lot of ice. She's late off as well. Seventh best speed. This is not going to be second at the line. She will be third. She is third. Lisa Bookwitz and Vanessa Mark slip a couple of spots. And here's a little error rubbing it up against the wall. And anyway, such strong runs from Alana Myers Taylor and especially Mel Hasler. Now, here again in 16, holds the line. Now, that's working against a centrifugal force and then comes off late. Sled climbs on the exit. And then a big flop taking lots of energy out of the sled that she could ill afford to lose at that stage. Lisa on the left, Vanessa on the right. So third at the moment, three to go. For the USA, Keisha Love, yesterday's first time winner in Monobob, her first ever World Cup race in the front seat with Azaria Hill behind her. Is lightning going to strike twice? I doubt she will explode if it does. Third after the first heat, here we go. Now she came out yesterday with the chance of a medal. It was an outside chance, but she just laid down such a storming second run. And look at this, it looks like she's been doing it all her life. Tracking straight and true down the middle. Two tenths up on Alana Myers-Taylor. Alana the winner here in 2015. Next up, the 2020 winner will try and challenge. Keisha, 2100's up, losing a little bit of ground. Doesn't quite have the speed of Wai Ming Ming, but about level with Alana. Keep it nice and tidy. 1100's, a little late. She's done literally a handful of races, maybe eight in total. Oh, little skid. This is a first World Cup start. She's behind Alana Myers-Taylor in second place. That is absolutely fantastic from Keisha Love. Second place with two to go. She could yet be on the podium. Brilliant, brilliant debut weekend from Keisha Love. And welcome to the World Cup as well. Azaria Hill, her break woman. What a beautiful helmet that is. She did do amazing. Fastest start in the first heat, 6.42. 6.45 in the second getaway. Little tag on the wall there. And again, out of 18, just runs a little wide into the wall. Skates down to 19. Hey, hey Mum! <laughs> Not the same Mum, you understand. A, a mum each, yeah, actually. OK, two to go. Kim Kalicki. And Lenny Fiebig, Lenny, as I said in the first heat, her first ever World Cup medal was here in 2020. She has never been off the podium in a World Cup race since. Kim Kalicki, Lenny Fiebig, third fastest start, 500 off gold at the bottom of the track, 6.41. They find eight hundreds of a second. That's a massive margin. That's worth 2,400 at the bottom all other things being equal, which on this track they really aren't. She's got to drive up a storm as well. Good so far. Best speed of all from Kim Kalicki. I think this might be torpedoing Keisha Love's hopes of a medal below the waterline. Alana Myers-Taylor is in the medals. Again, her third trip to this track in 11 years, and she's in the medals. Kim Kalicki, though, is looking for gold. Gaps coming down, was 34, now down to 2800s. Wyoming Ming Sled is still the fastest down here. Third best speed, two tenths up on the Lana. Oh, little touch, it's enough. She will be the leader with one to go. Is it enough for gold? We'll see, 61-02. 
Rene Spies on the left, a little shake of the head. Get Leopold on the right. Yeah, the brains that leads this German operation. 6.41, fastest start of the competition. Lenny Phoebe, by the way, holds the start record with Stephanie Schneider, 6.35. And with Kim Kalicki, she holds the fastest start of the competition. That was a big, heavy transition, 9 to 10. That probably took a good tenth out of the sled all the way down the track, and that little tap won't have helped either. Lenny on the left, Kim on the right, one to go. Are they our winners here, or will it be the Olympic champion? Lara Nolter with Naila Skelton behind her. World champions lead, Olympic champion, and the last winner on this track, Lara Nolter, is ready to take it on again. Is it gold once more for Lara Nolter? Naila Skelton, three wins, one silver in half a dozen races up to now. Nolta has had so many gold medals, 11 wins in women's bob alone. 6.47 getaway, quicker than their 6.53 in the first heat, that's for sure. Six hundredths of a second quicker, but she's in the red as she sits down. This is now about driving better than Kim Kalicki. She doesn't have quite the velocity at the start that Kalicki produced either. Kalicki and Phoebe produced, so she's got to find it further down the track. She won here in February 2020. She was off the podium in the Monobob race yesterday. And she is behind at the moment, but she's coming. It could still be gold. She needs to be super clean here. She is clean. Out of 18, whoa! 200, she's back in the green. It's gonna be a German winner, but who is it? It's Lara Nolta at the line. She did enough. 60.95. Well, she holds the track record at 60.67 with Deborah Levy, with whom she also equaled the start record when they won here three years ago. And now, February 2020, now Lara Nolta wins again with Naila Skelton. 12th World Cup Women's Bobsleigh Gold Medal for Lara Nolta, our Olympic champion. And there's Naila Skelton, her fourth win. And only her seventh World Cup race. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So congratulations, Lara Nolta, Naila Skelton. Good start, 6.47, they found 600 extra at the start. Despite a couple of little errors at the bottom of the track, Lara Nolte had enough speed in hand for those not to undo the good work early on. Claim victory here, the season opener of women's bobsleigh. So all the first time winners, that streak has stopped. We had four first-time winners in the first four races of the weekend. And that stops as Lara Nolta, who won here in 2020, wins again. Kim Kalicki takes silver. Alana Myers-Taylor continues with her podium streak here. 2012, 2015 gold. And 20, what are we now? 2023, <laughs> sorry. Uh, she takes bronze again. So just outside, Keisha Love fourth, Mel Hasler fifth and Lisa Bookwitz in sixth ahead of Brianna Walker, Margot Bock in eighth place, and Joe Greco and Wai Ming Ming rounding out the top 10. So it's uh, turning into quite a nice day here in La Plaine, France, and a nice day for Lara Nolte and Nero Scouten as they claim victory together once more. Fourth win for the duo. 12th of Lara's career. So Lara now with 30 medals. I beg your pardon, with 20 medals in her 27 races. One crash where she failed to finish. And 
and uh, a couple of fours in the sixth. Uh, a, a glittering array. Lauren Alter is our World Cup points leader after the first round of the series. Kim Kalicki lies in second ahead of Alana Myers-Taylor. Keisha Love in fourth position. And of course, Keisha leads the Monobob World Cup points after claiming victory yesterday ahead of uh, Switzerland's uh, Melanie Hassler and Romania's Andrea Grecu. They didn't have quite such a strong day today in the two-seat sleds, but all down and done inside the top ten. And again, congratulations to Nadia Pasternak and Roman Heinrich, and welcome to little baby Noeli, who arrived late yesterday evening after Nadia spent the morning at the track cheering on her teammate Melanie Hassler to that monobob podium. And that's it for the women's action for the weekend. We have the four-man yet to come, and that will be this afternoon. We will be back at 13.30 local, 12.30 GMT. That is 07.30 Eastern. Until then, for me, Martin Haven, what's left of my voice, and the IBSF TV crew here in the plan. We'll see you then. Bye for now.